नमस्कार व्यूअर्स आई विल बी ऑन पी गुरुस एंड विराट हिंदुस्तान संगम ऑनलाइन चैनल्स एज पार्ट ऑफ ज्ञान गंगा सीरीज ऑन संडे द फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑगस्ट टू टॉक अबाउट पेगसिस एंड इट्स इम्प्लीकेशन टू द सिक्योरिटी ऑफ द इंडियन सोसाइटी द टॉक विल हैव थ्री पार्ट्स वन वेन एंड वाई एन एस ओ वॉज फॉर्म्ड इट्स बाउंड्रीज एंड इट्स स्कोप ऑफ ऑपरेशन एंड हाउ इट एम्बेड्स इट सेल्फ इन टू योर फोन टू the various lawsuits against nso and what each one is looking at three how a user can defend herself himself against pegasus we will be touching upon implications of pegasus on indian politicians businessmen journalists and where things are headed looking forward to seeing you on p gurus and vhs online channels on sunday at 8 pm Thanks for watching and click on the bell button to receive notifications. Friends, namaste and welcome to our Sunday edition of Gyan Ganga. words of wisdom on our virat hindustan sangam various social media channels and as you all know we be at 8 pm live across the globe and every sunday we have dr subramanian swami discussing a new topic with a new guest and giving you lot of gyan giving you lot of wisdom on various issues that has been dominating the scene in the uh, week gone by or in the months gone by and today we will be having a discussion on guarding against phone tapping in the recent context of the pegasus and its implication to the security of the indian society our guest who will be talking with dr swami today is sri ayer who as you all know is based in the uh, california state of usa and uh, you have seen him in our programs earlier he is an author inventor innovator and out of box thinker he has 37 patents to his credit and he has been writing numerous books and his popular p guru's website where he publishes daily new articles new research new exposes and which is very popular with the indian media and the indian public is everybody watching it every day and wanting to know what is the next item he is going to be writing on he is the author of numerous books in the last uh, i would say 7 years uh, span he has written on uh, some of the books he has written on is ndtv frauds the gist of gstn rise and fall of aap c company and a uh, updated version of ndtv fraud and another thing which sri ayer specializes is he is a painter in prose his three books he which he has recently written is who painted my money white who painted my lust red and who painted my state purple in the context of the us elections so i say he is a painter in search uh, painter in search of various colors and he has been a painter in in prose so with this i welcome sri ayer and dr swami to our show we thank our viewers across the globe for their support last sunday's program we had a viewership of 42970 viewers and uh, the viewership grows and the viewership is across the globe in various countries and on our various social media platforms we are expanding on our various platform and catering to various age groups and friends across the globe so with this i have to thank my co-host uh, ramesh swami and also professor arvind chaturvedi from delhi and our technical team led by ashish shetty tejas navalgol gadgi rakesh ishwar ayer swami nathan and vishal mehta for their team efforts to put this team uh, uh, put this program together and do research work and help us in the background so with this remark it is over to dr swami to initiate the topic of today and start the discussion with sri ayer yeah. thank you 
Thank you, Jagdish. Uh, this is a technical, uh, I mean, a technical come uh, Sherlock Holmes mystery type situation that we are in. And I think uh, the technical thing needs to be cleared by the man who is today our chief guest, uh, namely uh, Sri Ayer. Uh, he, um, he lives in where, I think he lives in the town where uh, Apple has its headquarters, if I'm not wrong, uh, or near there, and uh, in California. And, uh, and he has, of course, uh, taken, taken the trouble and has given up his valuable time patenting. <laughs> he had patented already uh, nearly 40 um, uh, patents. He has got to his credit. And uh, he could have gone on much more. But he has, for the sake of Bharat Mata, uh, his original home, uh, uh, he has uh, devoting time to exposing. Uh, those of you who want to know about National Herald, he has brought out a, a book-like uh, publication. And uh, that uh, is uh, very thorough. Uh, yes, there it is. It's a very thorough uh, analysis of National Herald. So you, uh, the, you can say um, all the questions you wanted to ask, but were afraid to ask. So you don't have to worry. You just... Uh, have to uh, buy that, get that book uh, from his website and so on. I will not uh, take up much more time. I will just some uh, technicalities which people are confused by. I want to make it clear. NSO, National Security Organization, am I right? That's the, yes. uh, it is a private company. It's not Israeli government. Of course, the Israeli government, uh, as you say, and most of his staff are a retired Mossad and Shin Bet and uh, so on. So, I mean, uh, Israel is a small country and they use the human resources, you know, from uh, uh, across the, uh, uh, the, the spectrum of employment. And uh, therefore, these people are really experts. And the, this company uh, uh, is... On the verge, I wouldn't say it is certain, but it's on the verge of being bought by a company called Berkeley Research Group. I don't know whether Shri Ayer will tell us something about it because it's in California. And so an American company may be now buying this. And maybe because of the controversy, the, it might go. So this is something you have to watch out. The Pegasus is a horse with wings, uh, which... Uh, uh, a member of my family who knows uh, uh, all about all this says that the horse uh, uh, flew uh, up in the sky and then became part of the constellation. And it, there's an identified constellation for it. So, I, I, I mean, there's obviously Pegasus is an uh, is attractive name. So, it's, it's, it's a company. It's a software company. And because it is for spying, therefore, it's called a spyware company. So then uh, the leak was uh, carried out by something called Media uh, Part, two journalists. And it was then widely published in Washington Post, in London, uh, London's Guardian, Le Monde in Paris, and so on. So the, the, uh, uh, these, uh, this, because of this publication, now we know about it. Uh, now... We have no official knowledge of it. The statement given in Parliament by the new uh, uh, IT minister uh, basically says we have done nothing unauthorized. And uh, leaving the impression, therefore, they, they have done nothing. So it's a, it's a very cagey answer. And I think uh, you are, I won't be able to push it much more. What we need is a disclosure either from France where they have actually set up an inquiry. And uh, the uh, prosecutor of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Paris has, has gone to it. And uh, their part of their problem is one of the countries which was being uh, uh, monitored was Morocco. And Morocco is, uh, is uh, uh, sure that uh, it was uh, the French who have done it. And so they have filed a defamation suit against uh, 
the uh, French authors who are involved in this. And so uh, France has got involved. Now the Israelis have also joined with France and they are trying to come out uh, uh, with a uh, common approach. Now, um, I would uh, only add one more thing that uh, the Israeli government is also ordered an inquiry. And so the Ministry of Defense is investigating. And uh, they, they will come out with a comprehensive report and is likely to be uh, explosive uh, disclosures because it's happened during Netanyahu's time and the present government has been formed only to keep Netanyahu out of power. It's a coalition from the Arabs, <laughs> the uh, small Arab section uh, MPs who have got elected uh, right to members of um, Netanyahu's cabinet. Uh, uh, who have, uh, you know, come out of it. And so this coalition will survive only if they target, continue to target um, um, Netanyahu. So they are also very keen for it to come out. So the government of India, if actually they did contract, and I can't see how they would, and some, uh, somebody authoritative, whether with the permission of the prime minister or without the permission of the prime minister, I don't know. But it could not have been, there are so many names, 300 names. Uh, these names could not have been gone into because some of them are ministers, some of them are judges, some of them are senior officials of enforcement directorate, etc. So it couldn't have gone in unless it was because the mandate for NSO is that it will only contract with governments and nobody else, no private parties they will uh, contract. And most of their work is for tracking uh, telephones of terrorists, but now uh, money is, is a very attractive thing. So the uh, um, governments were ready to, ready to pay a lot. And so they, they said, well, we assume that they are giving terrorist names <laughs> of our ministers and Supreme Court judges and so on. So the key question is, was, uh, will the Indian government be named as a buyer or contractor of this uh, software. Now, if that happens uh, and uh, India is cleared, then this matter is over. But if India is not cleared and they say, no, the following people from India, uh, National Security Advisor or IP Chief or RAW Chief and so on, they are the ones who came and contracted. And here's the picture of the contract. So then, of course, we are in a uh, real big scandal, which will be much like Watergate in the United States. What is the uh, violation? The violation is Article 19 of the Constitution, 19 bracket 1 bracket 1, freedom of speech, and which has been interpreted to include uh, freedom to hold opinions and so on. So it's a very wide fundamental right in our Constitution. And the second one is the right to life, which includes a whole lot of things. And that is Article 21. So both these have been, uh, if uh, in any case, whether India is involved or not is another issue. But this particular investigation is a violation of these two articles of the Constitution. And so N. Ram uh, of Hindu, the Hindu, uh, has uh, uh, produced uh, produce, uh, as uh, is, um, is, a, is a writ petitioner uh, on a PIL, which uh, the Supreme Court announced uh, uh, last, uh, last uh, Friday, that they will hear it in the coming Thursday. So this week, Thursday, Ram's petition will be heard. And then from then on, if they issue notice to the government, then the government has to come out with the, the truth and if the truth is that they are not involved, that's very good. It's good for the government. But if not, then I think a lot of political turmoil is ahead. So um, now maybe Mr. Sri uh, Ayer, uh, um, or I, you deserve a doctor, so I am willing to give you call you Doctor Ayer, <laughs> <laughs> doctor many times over. Uh, uh, Ayer. Uh, this company may be now next door to you, Berkeley uh, Research Group. Uh, they are uh, pretty serious in trying to buy it. And uh, 
you are in a position uh, to tell us what really happened. I've only said what the structure is so that people understand there's a difference between Peg Pegasus and, uh, and uh, NC, NSO and so on. One is an organization, the other is the software. <coughs> and what does this software do? And why is it so obnoxious for us? And then uh, what are the ramifications? So over to you. No one will disturb you till you finish speaking. You take as long as you want. It's a hot topic and there's no time limit. Namaskar to all um, my viewers, my family of VHS. And uh, thank you once again, Dr. Swami, Jagdish Ji, Ramesh Swami, Arvind Ji, for giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts on this latest revelation that has actually seized the whole world. And um, I did a quick teaser uh, that was out on VHS India. In fact, you may have seen it today. Um, the, the, the slide presentation that I have, I have a very short slide presentation, only eight slides. I want to put it out there so people don't think, oh my God, here goes another 30 slide deck. It is very, very small, eight slides. And I'm just going to quickly go through the, uh, from the genesis of this company, NSO, up until now, how they have kept upping the ways they could snoop and what are the things that we can do to avoid getting snooped, assuming that our name comes on the list. By the way, I'm as disappointed as Dr. Swami that my name also hasn't appeared on any of these snoop lists. So that's okay. We are not enough. We haven't done enough, Dr. Swami. That's all it tells. <laughs> we have to do more. So uh, with your permission, sir, now I'm going to put a, a slide presentation. And uh, here we go. Pegasus and its implications to the security of the Indian society. Was the snoopware misused to settle scores? So this is the second question that I'm going to ask. And let's take a quick look at uh, what is this uh, presentation is going to be about. We're going to touch upon three things. When and why NSO was formed, its boundaries, its scope of operation, the various lawsuits that are against NSO. And this started uh, you know, a fair amount of years before. It's not today. And, and, and new suits are still coming up. And how you as a user can defend against Pegasus. Now, Pegasus software was released for the first time in 2010. By 2014, it could embed itself into an Android or an iPhone using what is known as clickbait. What clickbait is that, you know, you will be getting a message. It will be either on your email or on WhatsApp saying that, uh, Click on this to find out you've got, uh, you won the lottery of a million dollars. <laughs> Click on this to get your money and so on and so forth. That is called as clickbait. So till, you know, till recently, I would say about 2017 or so, one required to go and click on something to, to be able to start the, uh, to be able to enable the Pegasus to start snooping on you. That used to be the case. But today we are known, we are at what is called as zero click. What that means is that Pegasus has now hacked most of the versions of smartphone uh, I, uh, software operating systems, whether it is Android or iPhone, it doesn't matter. They seem to have figured out a way to get underneath all the apps and, and sit as an, a vulnerable uh, at the lowest level, which means that they have figured out backdoor entries to operating systems, whether it is iOS or Android. And I might just want to take one minute to explain to you how Android is considered less secure than iPhone. The reason is very simple. From what I am told, Google doesn't charge much for Android. It might be even zero. So the operating system is given to the guy who's assembling the phone. Now imagine the guy who's assembling the phone is taking something from chipset vendor like Qualcomm or Texas or uh, Samsung, then he's he's designing a pretty looking box. He's, he's worried about how low cost he can make it. So clearly they don't have the bandwidth to check what kind of security features Android comes with. Therefore, you know, things get a little bit more murky and hence Android is considered less secure. The, I'm going to, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to say how are all the things that we are going to we can do to keep ourselves safe. And Ramesh Swami will be also complimenting this. 
with some observations of his own. So today, what is the status? All Pegasus needs is a phone number. From this, it will identify the phone, then its vulnerability and embed itself without the user knowing. There will be no notification that you are being tailed now. And I explained to you, iPhone is considered harder to crack mainly because Apple controls all aspects of the iPhone, the hardware, the software, and the firmware. Therefore, it is considered more secure. Again, it is not as if iPhone has not been hacked. It has been hacked. In fact, I'll tell you why it has been hacked. If you can unlock an iPhone in India, an iPhone that was purchased for use in US or somewhere outside of India, that means somebody has figured out a way to get into iPhone and you know open its vulnerabilities. Next one is once Pegasus embeds itself, it can control the audio and video functions. In fact, it can turn on audio, turn on video without your knowing it. So I'm very curious about it because since I have not been hacked, because there is a little bit of a button, uh, there's an LED that glows when your video is on, on your phone. I don't know if they have figured out a way to turn on video without turning on the LED. So it's, it's an interesting topic. I don't know. We have to see how that goes. Anyway, recently, I think about uh, seven, eight days ago, Amazon Web Services shut down the NSO servers. And uh, this was on the Amazon Web Services platform called AWS. See, here is where things get a little interesting. NSO was part of an Israel government cloud, state cloud. And that was considered to be one of the higher secure uh, you know, installations or instantiations on the Amazon Web Services. Now, when NSO got deplatformed. What happens to the rest of the Israeli government machinery? Did AWS just isolate NSO and do it? Or is the in government's data itself being affected? We don't know the answer to this question. Neither Amazon has come out and said anything, nor Israel has said anything. The important takeaway from this is Israel, which used to have excellent relationships with Amazon, Google, and so on. There are some cracks that are beginning to appear. And like Dr. Swami said in the beginning, that there has been a concerted attempt to keep Netanyahu out from the government formation. And I'm going to dwell, uh, dwell on that a little bit after we finish this thing and give you some alternative perspectives on what's going on. Now, the other important thing is NSO requires Israel government's explicit permission to sell to other countries. It has to be given. The, the Defense Minister of Israel has to sign off saying that it is okay for this government to start using Pegasus software. Now, the question that then comes up is, was India abusing its uh, uh, license and was it doing it willfully? Were approvals obtained? So the way I understand it, viewers, again, I'm I've lived in the American uh, in United States for 30 plus years, and I understand the legal system here. If you want someone to be tapped, you need to get a judge's permission, and the judge needs to be convinced that this person whom they are seeking to tap, whether it is a law and order agencies like police or investigative agencies like CBI, they have to establish firmly that this person is indulging in anti-national activity, yeah. terrorism, or anything that essentially uh, uh, affects the stability of that country. Were these approvals obtained? Now, like uh, Dr. Swami said, one line answer in the parliament, and this is in Babu East, bureaucraties. You know, <laughs> why say not unapproved and all that stuff? Why can't they say we have not done it? They won't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Because they want this, you know, legal room to get out. We didn't say this, we didn't meant this, but that is how governments work. I mean, I, I can tell you, IAS uh, hopefuls must be, uh, you know, watching Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister that aired 30 plus years ago in, in BBC and think, ah, this is how I'm going to present stuff. Anyway, back to our presentation. So now the next thing is there have been many lawsuits against NSO. I'm just going to dwell on one. Uh, WhatsApp sued NSO in 2019. And what did WhatsApp say? WhatsApp accused the company, that is NSO, of targeting its users' mobile device with malware. So in 2019, WhatsApp figured out that 
their app was being hacked. At that point, Pegasus technology was app-based. That means you could specifically take a particular app and figure out a vulnerability and then break that thing. Now, in the court documents, this is the so the, the case came up, I think, in 2020, and NSO argued that it should be remember the previous slide i said that nso for it to be licensed to any country requires permission from the israeli government so what they said was we should be granted sovereign immunity because its clients are vetted government customers and governments cannot be sued for performing their legitimate functions and this is the important part nso has also argued that it is the customer that does the targeting, not the company. In other words, once Pegasus software is licensed to say India, it is India who is going to take up and start listing. I want to look at this number, this number, this number, and so on and so forth. So first, what happens is in many cases, the, the, the lawsuit itself is examined for merits. And a judge said that it could proceed. This happened in 2020. After that, the... Um, uh, the NSO went back and appealed this ruling, and now the judge has made a ruling in April. However, it has not seen the light of day yet. But my guess is that after all this, I don't think there is any other choice but to let the trial proceed and see how WhatsApp can say that we have been willfully hacked by NSO. We have to wait and see how that plays out. Next. So... How does one defend against Pegasus? After all, we are all, you know, customers. We, we you know, we look, we look at uh, the lowest cost uh, smartphone. Actually, we look for value. which gives you the best value. And that's how we buy our phones. So in 2014, this was a um, brochure that Pegasus put out that it can monitor voice and VOIP. That is voice over internet protocol calls in real time. A VoIP call you can think of. Uh, some of you, you know, whether it is WhatsApp or FaceTime, all these are VOIP. They can siphon contacts, passwords, files, and encrypted content from the phone. They can also listen. In. This is 2014. Things have evolved quite a bit after that. But as Pegasus breaks into operating systems, what happens is this is a race, you know. Once I, uh, Apple, for example, comes to know that Pegasus has broken into their iOS, they go and find out how they got entry. And then they'll close that. And then Pegasus goes back and says, hmm, so they have closed this door. Let me see what other door I can open. But the, the takeaway here is it no longer is uh, limited to apps. It is now at the operating system level. So once they open, it's like you know giving the keys to the kingdom. Once you have that, they can pretty much look at whatever you want, except except there are some conditions where you can still defeat Pegasus. I'll let Ramesh Swami uh, dwell on that uh, when his turn comes. Next, how do you defend against Pegasus? The simplest thing I can tell you viewers is be transparent in your lifestyle. So what some, if someone gets your contents? So what? These days, everything is out there. In Facebook, you are saying who your friends are, who your family is, where they are doing, what they are doing, you are celebrating your birthday, myself included. And, and if you obey the laws of the land and pay all taxes, what is there to worry about? <laughs> At some point, they are going to say, oh, this guy likes, leads a very boring life. And you automatically <laughs> <get> it <laughs> and delete it. Also, that, let's say if that's you... How, that's how you and I got off the list. Yes, yes, that's probably true. That's probably true. <laughs> so the other option is to segment your functions, meaning have multiple smartphones. Use one phone dedicated for VOIP applications such as, say, WhatsApp, um, Telegram, and Signal, and so on and so forth. And in that way, what happens is your family life, your personal life, you keep it on one phone, but your professional thing, your contact, you keep it on a different phone. Now, VAD, VAD the software that I've been trying to promote in India, does have this thing. It's called as multiple profiles. You can click into one profile on one number and then you can go from personal to business and so on and so forth. It takes care of a few things, but I'll add to that once Ramesh Swami has had his say. Next one is the most important. This is the most important thing. We don't even realize we are doing this. Run as few apps as possible. Because sometimes what happens is, let's say there is a new code patch that came from iPhone that you installed, and Pegasus can no longer get into your phone. You're on, you're being tagged. 
Then Pegasus will take the next level of approach. They'll say, okay, what apps are you running? Let me see if I can get into your phone through one of your apps. So why give them that oxygen? Use as few apps as possible. It, it gives you several other benefits. It will increase your uh, battery life, and you, meaning like it'll uh, one charge, it'll go longer. More importantly, your apps that are still remaining will run faster. This is the truth. People don't realize it, but let us try to follow this. These are all simple rules. Just reduce the number of apps that you're going to use on a phone. That will give you a lot of protection. Now, let's take a step back and look at snooping. Snooping has been around for a long time. In 2015, Reuters reported that WikiLeaks had suggested that America's National Security Agency was spying on Merkel and her staff. And this had gone on for a long time. This is when 2015, under, Ob uh, under uh, Barack Obama, and uh, WikiLeaks had claimed that NSA targeted long-term surveillance of 125 phone numbers. Now, what happened? Germany was outraged. And, and, and suddenly, you know, Obama lost uh, his tongue. He didn't say anything. He just very quiet, kind of got buried under and tried to look for some other news cycles to hit. But the interesting thing that happened was, looks like, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm connecting the dots here. This is the, oh. the painter in prose talking here. Germany has a law that it cannot snoop on its own citizens. So uh, Angela Merkel, who wanted to find out where the illegally obtained wealth of its high net worth individuals are, asked the US to snoop on its citizens and give <laughs> that data. <laughs> so <laughs> some sort of a quid pro quo was um, uh, arrived at. So my, my take, uh, Dr. Swami, in this is that even though we are hoping that there will be some revelations at a, at a country to country level, usually what will happen is, okay, you will do this, I will do this, and we will just say that, you know, we were not going to do this anymore. I'll give you a first step that has already happened in this case. What has happened is NSO has now stopped 40 countries from continuing to use the Pegasus software. So clearly from the server, they have a way to turn off the switch. So now as of today, 40 countries cannot use Pegasus software. So there is some, some uh, damage prevention happening. So before I finish the thing, I have one uh, small observation. I'm, I'm going to stop my screen now. We can get back to... I have one small observation. You, you touched upon it, sir, and I want to expand on this a little bit more. Now, let us take a look at what has been happening around the world. See, when Trump lost in 2020, it was considered a victory of the liberals. And, and in the United States, there are also another group called progressives that they have managed to unseat Obama. And if you go back and listen to George Soros' speeches, he has consistently said that he would like to uh, have open societies, open borders, and looks like, I mean, again, again, I'm putting on my painter's hat here, looks like there was a deal that as soon as Biden administration assumes control, that they will have open borders. Sir, between half a million to a million people have illegally crossed into the United States. And they were all not even checked for COVID. And the better part here is that once the border camps got filled and they got filled up very fast, these people were bused, flown to various parts of the country. Now, the rule in the United States is every illegal immigrant needs to get in front of a judge and his case has to be heard before the judge will say, yes, he can stay or he needs to be deported. Now, the waiting time is three years. And, and, and just like, I mean, I can tell you, sir, my perception is that the Democrats in the United States, they took the playbook from Congress and said, let's take it and let's that use it again and again. I'll give you another example. I've been writing and I don't know how many other uh, uh, media sites have been writing about this, but there has been one author, Sri Hari Om, who has been visiting the Rohingya camps in Jammu. And he did a research, astounding research. He said that they were very carefully placed in those constituencies where the margin of victory of the 
uh, BJP was between 400 and 500 votes. And the other thing he said was for once or twice they were allowed to uh, go into the camp. He said he did not see a single Rohingya family with less than eight children, sir. Eight children. <laughs> Imagine the kind of thing that's going to happen 10 years from now. India has a very poor record of deporting anyone. They'll just do some exercise where, you know, uh, <laughs> they, in the camp, there'll be 2,500. On the train, there'll be 500. By the time the train reaches the border, there'll be five. <laughs> See, this, is, <laughs> this is the kind of implementation we have. It's yeah, full it's of... Sad, uh, sad. It's very, very sad. I, I'm, I'm see, I'm really getting under the skin of the government here. I'm hoping that somebody gets enough josh to say we got to fix this thing. And and to, so why, my point is, they have done the same thing in the United States, sir. These the 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 uh, these illegal immigrants have gotten themselves buried into what I call as inner city places where it is very easy to get lost. It's going to be a Herculean task to try and find out. Even when they get their day in the court, to locate that person and bring him to the court. Because the courts are probably at the point where they cross into the United States, which is maybe Texas. So you see, there is a huge problem here. And so getting back to the main point, the liberals wanted complete control. And by complete control, I mean they did not want the world to know if a toolkit was indeed being passed around everybody in the world. <laughs> and Pegasus comes in the way of that. So this is the contrarian view. The contrarian view is, look at what Netanyahu, uh, what happened to Netanyahu. He lost by one vote. That's so right. Somewhere, some other country has been twisting arms, bashing heads together and saying, it doesn't matter. We need a non-Netanyahu government and we shall get that done. So if you think about some of the countries that were aligned Say in 2020 June, you had Netanyahu in Israel, Modi in India, and uh, Trump, in, Trump in the United States. And Trump was standing up to China, and he he was he was very relentless. He was saying that you shall pay the tariffs and you shall respect our intellectual property. So, but now they have managed to win in two out of three. The third one being uh, Boris Johnson. Somehow the uh, British have elected conservative government, which I think has a little bit more hope uh, than, say, if there was a Labour Party. The Labour was would have wreaked havoc, in my opinion, again. So the last bastion is, I mean, three, three, three people, Viktor Orban in Hungary, Narendra Modi in India, and Bolsonaro in Brazil. Uh, Abe is already sick. Poor guy. And, and Suga is a pale shadow of Abe. Again, my opinion, I could be wrong. So you see that this one, this is now the last thing that is standing between absolute control for the liberals. Again, all this is one point of view, sir. And viewers, I, I want to express this thing. Please, please make your own conclusions. All I am saying is what I am reading. And I have spent a lot of time doing research on this. In fact, I went to Hebrew sites, translated it into English to see what the local newspapers were saying. So my point here is there are two sides to a story. This could be one such thing, but it does not take away the fact that people in India were snooped. And, and again, I want to give you another small data point, uh, Dr. Swami, with your permission, just one minute. See, yeah, okay. when 370 was abrogated, right? In Kashmir Valley, in specific areas, internet was cut off for, I think, 18 months or something like that. Why was that cut off? Now, and a, a subject matter expert who came on P Guru's channel explained it thus. He said that prior to uh, 2019, smartphones with special software used to be smuggled in from across the border. And these smartphones could instantly tell you where stone pelting was going to take place. They had everything arranged. The stones would be arranged because I used to always wonder, how the heck can you get hundreds of stones at the same point? How can so many people, you know, it's like a flash mob. That's a, that's a concept called flash mob where, you know, people will just come to a, a, a mall and then start dancing on a particular tune. Something like that these guys were doing. So Indian government was unable, again, this is the SME's observation, unable to track what was the software that was being used, send all these messages. The only thing that they could see was this software needed Wi-Fi connectivity. Therefore, you cut that. Hence, the information gets cut. 
Now, this was made into a big deal by none other than the current Vice President Kamala Ayer Harris. She said that, yeah. you know, she made some very intemperate remarks. I hope she'll, you know, uh, she has to see that for herself. Anyway, so the point that uh, uh, Madam Kamala Harris forgets to mention is that, sir, there is a neighborhood near my house called Gilroy. In 2018 or 2019, the year is not important. There was multiple shooting incident in a mall. Two different places people were shooting. You know what the police did? They shut down the internet for that area for close to two hours. Because once they figure out that it is not a lone shooter and that it is happening in, in, in collision, with, collision with multiple people, they have no other way. They have to come and act immediately. Because there's a synchronized you know, play of events that, that could be happening. So US does it too. So I don't think it is US, uh, it behooves US to lecture other countries that you shall respect human rights when they themselves don't do it many times. Sometimes there is no other option. So just live, move on and go on. So long, to, long story short, Pegasus is but one instance of where the um, surveillance has come to light. Uh, whatever be the person who is making it up, like Amnesty International and other organizations, the truth is still the truth, sir. I think the people of the world deserve to know the truth. And that's where my stand is. Thank you very much. Uh, before I ask uh, Ramesh to uh, give his, uh, uh, he's also a software expert. In fact, he does a lot of work for the U.S. government on that. So uh, that question is this. If uh, somebody accused the government of India of, um, uh, you know, getting these uh, software, this Pegasus, uh, soft Pegasus uh, software, uh, for Pakistani officials, Chinese officials, one could understand why Indian government, when they have IB and you have RAW, and there's a lot of tapping going on here within the country, why would an Indian government, where the accusation is made that this Indian government is behind it, why would the Indian government go to an Israeli company to do what it can do itself within the own, in its own country. So, sir, it clearly states that there are limits to how much snooping the India's own software or capabilities are. It is not easy, sir. And uh, you have to have a lot of acquired knowledge, acquired database, where you keep continuously building. See, Pegasus has been in existence since 2010. Yeah. It took them yeah. four years before they could attach themselves to an application. And then only recently, they've got the zero click capability. And the reason for that could be, again, that could be, is that the number of Android manufacturers has come down. So it's, you know, so the, the, the shrink, the pool is shrinking and therefore it was easier for them to do it. So my guess is that uh, India's snooping capabilities are perhaps not as good as, uh, you know, the Israelis. The Israelis are again, top of the line, sir. They need this for their existence. They need to know when a certain adversary is about to catch cold. I mean, they want to catch it the sneeze point. Yeah, yeah, they, they are fighting terrorism in a very scientific way. Would you say, prima facie, you think without the Indian government, this couldn't have been done? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This, <laughs> sir, I'll give you a simple example, sir. There is, there is a gentleman who comes regularly on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on P Gurus. His name is Jitendra Kumar Oja. And he has a concept called Indocracy. He's been saying, what does what needs to be done? In everything in India is now corrupt. Where do you start? How are we going to do it? So we, were, we have been doing identifying various aspects and things like that. And his number, his wife's number, is on that list. <laughs> and, and I'll give you one other interesting information, sir. He had he's he is honest to a fault. He is his. He does not brook any kind of uh, corruption, and he was instrumental in lining up uh, 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 Dawood Ibrahim's uh, lieutenant Iqbal Mirchi in London, where he worked with Scotland Yard, local police. He had to build a case in Britain. You can't just like that say, "Go tail this guy." Go. To. He did everything meticulously, brick by brick, brick by brick. And he built the whole case and all the MEA had to do was to formally request an extradition order. And this is all UPA time, not NDA. NDA has been better in this respect. And they didn't do it. 
So there is another person called Ravi Shankaran, a, a arms dealer. Again, he has done all this. So the point now is that he crosswords with the current raw chief. You see, so oh. my fear is there are people who are embedding their own personal people that they want to keep tabs on and saying, okay, add this guy's name. Mr. Chidambaram probably had a list. In the top of the list was the ED officer, uh, Rajeshwar Singh, his wife, his sister, <laughs> who's also an IS officer. That's true. These people are being there. So, they, so somewhere, you know, maybe uh, the, the top three, Amit Shah, Modi and uh, Ajit Doval had a few people in their uh, um, site, in their crosshairs. But then once it comes down, you know, <laughs> everybody gets added in this list. So, which is why I'm deeply disappointed that you and I are not there. <laughs> yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> I, I'm, going ask the, I'm, I'm going to ask the Israelis to put my name and your name uh, just for the sake of spiting Modi. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ramesh. Yes, sir. I'll, yeah, can you hear me, Sri? Good? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay so Dr. Swami, I have three slides. So, um, uh, Sri pretty much covered most of the very important topics. Uh, yeah. So, I, the most important thing, as Sri was mentioning or more than once, was the zero click. Means you don't have to do anything. As long as there is a cell phone tower where this equipment is installed, you have no control over it. So essentially, it uses a network injection. So what I mean by that is there is some equipment that's mounted on a cell phone tower. You don't know. So and then that's it. And all they need is just that. And as long as there's a phone call that's coming to the tower, they know in an area, they can mount it in four or five towers. And that's it. In any phone call that comes in, they can latch onto it. So it injects itself when a conversation happens. Be it a phone call, FaceTime, WhatsApp message, it doesn't matter. It just hooks onto it. So that's the way it gets injected. That's what we call the... And it's a no notification. It doesn't tell you something is getting installed. Um, so it and it right now pretty much hooks on to all the major messaging applications, WhatsApp, uh, Telegram, Signal. Sri mentioned all of this. In fact, FaceTime and iMessage too, for that matter. They're all hooked on. And people think that they can remove it or all the things. It does leave even if they remove it on their own. Let's say they put it out and pull it out. There is a residual payload left. I will explain to you what the residual payload does because Sri mentioned something in a, in a speech. Uh, so in general, public need not worry because it's extremely expensive. It's a basic installation is half a million dollars and it's $650,000 for 10 licenses. So, so basically transfers to $65,000 per license, which is what we're talking about, 4.7 million rupees, something to the defect. So it's pretty expensive. General public need not be worried, but obviously targets. I mean, the, it is pretty expensive. And if you, you can only do, if you buy $65,000, you get five licenses, you could target five points. Yeah. So if you want to target five more, you have to buy five or stop snooping on five, go to the next five. So that's essentially what this whole thing is all about. But anybody who's saying that, oh, we don't know, he's just pulling drugs on all of it. It is impossible. The <laughs> they only speak to the government, as Sri said, it's very clear. And you need access to the towers. I mean, who's oh. going to have access to the towers? It's not something you and me can just climb a tower and put a you know network yeah. equipment out there. So you have to be very clear and, and know... Um, cell phone company or what we call as a provider would say, okay, use my, I mean, they, there is some tacit understanding. Let's, let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. So it is impossible for the government not getting involved. And all the equipment that is telecom has to be licensed. So yes. I, it, it is imp like what the, the question that you asked, it's near impossible. And if you say a foreign country is doing it, it is shame on our country because we don't know yeah. that a foreign country is installing it. You know, it's yeah. ridiculous to say that a foreign country is doing it. Yeah. So let's come to quickly on mitigation. I'm just going to go for the drastic measures to what we can do diligently, because this is not for the common public, but I'm just telling you, stop using the infected cell phone. Actually, that is the only solution. <laughs> throw that phone away. Literally, now yeah. phone and SIM, both. You have to throw it away, get a new number and new phone. Or, <laughs> like what Sri suggested, have two phones, keep one for private and keep one for business and do whatever you want. Disconnect, typically use limited apps, like what he says, and make sure that all your passwords are changing every 30 days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to be madness, but that's exactly what it is. If you're so paranoid that you're on the list, luckily you're not on the list, he is not on the list, so he doesn't have to keep changing the passwords. <laughs> so uh, you don't have to keep changing it, but that's, that's the way the mitigation works. I'm just purely from a technical standpoint. Sometimes when you restart, it temporarily stops Pegasus because it needs time for it to activate. So maybe, but how long can you keep doing this? 
even a factory reset i'm just going to come back to the previous slide that i said even a factory reset there is no guarantee factory reset is just completely reset the phone and start all over again there is no guarantee that pegasus will be removed let me tell you what when you start installing the other pieces of software on it like put on whatsapp so when sri said even when you update what pegasus does is it keeps a track of what you're doing on the phone hey he's updated <laughs> and it keeps so it knows that you have upgraded or it knows that you factory reset and you'll send the in injected message again so there is literally very difficult to escape this once your phone is targeted unless they pull you out of it it's very difficult to escape from this and plus even if apple patches one part what does pegasus do it is intelligent enough to latch on to other apps right like whatsapp or something else so it leaves that app to monitor you So there is oh. very difficult to get away from this. It's like yeah. you know, once you once you're in, it's very difficult to get out unless they choose to remove it. And they you are put. Say, you mean to say somebody else telephones me, so automatically they get into a connection to my phone? Is it in case? No, 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 no. Well, that's not oh. what it is. Let's say you talk to me. You reset the whole phone, and yes. they all have your phone in their database. That's a target. Yes. They, they basically yes. say attack vector. So they call it the target. Yes. So even if you reset the phone, all you're using the same phone number and SIM. it really doesn't oh. matter ah oh, acha acha okay 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 so Because they have the phone number phone number so it knows that you reset the phone so it knows that they have to reinstall <laughs> okay. very simple as that so you know as, as three, it, 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 it is very difficult to get away from this unless okay. they choose to remotely undo uh -huh. it and which okay. they have full cover but they have control they can say like yeah. sit in the back of the server and they'll remove it and say we never spied you there is okay. no way for you to trace it they just huh. like the way they installed they can get away so, okay. so i think some of them have put up a tool and it's not a simple tool that you install it's not easy guys don't try it's not easy to get that tool and just say, oh i'm going to install my tool there are some good experts in india they can do it but uh, it's yeah. not worth for a common person to do this it's, 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 it's nobody's going to go i mean right. like sri said we are all leading boring lives in vhs because we speak the truth <laughs> so <laughs> so there's no point in trying to target us so, so just don't get that the man jayate might have to be given up <laughs> <laughs> it's actually that's what it is and and right. some basic security things you know keep make sure that your phone have a lot of you know you have a good pin six digit pin on your phone even though it's not directly an pegasus mitigation there could be other things that could happen so don't do that keep your phone updated latest firmware i'm telling you 85% of the people in the world don't update their firmware but i'm like a madman look for it every day so keep that as a habit keep making sure that your phone has got the latest updates important if possible keep restarting your phone every day it does help in other ways too always enable two factor on all your applications do not go anywhere else because it's not only that it could be so many other things that are leaking out and okay. don't click on any link that come from an unknown number even though pegasus oh. is a non clickable you never know what else you're going down the line you know there could be a chinese thing coming in there could be a pakistani yeah. thing coming in so don't click on anything that you don't know about yeah right. and block all notifications and apps because your temptation is to click on something so as far as possible get limited temptation and last point about android 3 was absolutely right there are so many flavors of android in india we don't know what version is there and they are whether they are patched or not in 90 80% of the cases the most are they have enough vulnerability so a uh, god forsaken place android is a god forsaken place so uh, yeah. it's a, preferably keep yourself safe secure that's what it is and there was some comment in the in in one of the comments people said oh can we put a secure os it really doesn't matter it really doesn't matter at the end of the day i mean somebody said there are some version high secure versions but really doesn't matter the only way to mitigate is whenever you're using the phone to transmit important messages use a vpn but it's too complicated for a common man so it's really not worth mentioning it it's too complicated right. for so that's it okay. that's my that is my i end with that okay uh, just to add to what you mentioned ramesh um wad has an attempt to try and create a vpn like shell around Correct. the app and and that's what makes us comfortable that we are safe however right. the latest versions have not been tested we are still in the process of making sure that we can claim officially that pegasus cannot uh, you know track us if we are running this but it's still you know one of the things that people complain is that when they are using wad it takes about 3 or 4 seconds before you can hear the other side and the reason for that is 
that there is a lot of computation going on there trying to set up this vpn like uh, secure uh, link between the two side which is what happens so anyway those of you who are using it good luck to you the quality is pretty good once this connection is established however we are not going to town yet we want to be careful we want to make sure that what we claim is the truth so that that's all i have okay okay jagdish uh, arvind uh, is arvind there yeah yeah he's yes. joining us arvind do yeah. you want to say anything? Uh, uh, my question is not been uh, in fact the, the background which has been given by shri and uh, uh, ramesh swami is very technical and uh, it is for the viewers to you know upgrade their technical knowledge but my question is more political my question is the list which the uh, uh, different sources have uh, uh, released has many people who are in my opinion insignificant yeah now the question is why should government be doing surveillance on these people who are not politically significant i mean i can understand one or two ministers or one or two mps or one or two uh, let's say senior journalists who may be conspiring with the politicians and all that but we all know that this business has been going on for ages state governments do it you know you you were part of chandrashekhar government which was uh, alleged that that the two constables were spying on rajiv gandhi's ten yeah. per house and the government fell because of that then and you have and, state, and, and before that ramkrishna hegde <laughs> ramkrishna hegde you have state government cases now very recently even the rajasthan government led by ashok gailot yeah, was uh, accused of doing it in fact we all know we have been in politics that even at the local level there is something called liu local yeah. intelligence unit yeah. they keep on uh, doing this kind of thing but why would they do it for insignificant people <laughs> and why <laughs> should government spend so much money no, now no, no. let me ask Arvin. let me ask a technical Arvin. question from ramesh and sri that technical question is in order to get all that information there has to be a, a system whereby there will be some uh, huge staff which will actually monitor this and then pass it on to the bosses so what kind of staff do you think will be required to tap the <laughs> phones of let's say 1000 uh, uh, people and how many hours i mean if they are monitoring for 24 hours just imagine the volume i mean uh, is mind boggling and why should government spend so much money time staff for i mean uh, but let me also tell you for some people the public uh, impression is that yes government is doing it and minister has said in the uh, parliament also that we do it and we have a system but uh, there two versions two second version is the parliamentary affairs minister mr parlaj joshi said it is a non issue why the parliament is being disturbed i mean uh, non issue for them or non issue for opposition and do you think it is political i mean the the opposition is also making it more political and uh, there is not substance in it uh, dr swami and uh, the for technical aspect ramesh and shri and, and jagdish was about to say something yeah, then I, yeah jagdish ramesh uh, arvind i am going to answer your question yeah number one whom you think as insignificant ha uh, may be insignificant from your point of view ah. <laughs> i know i know of a chief minister of not many decades ago who was oh. telephone tapping the phone of his of his girlfriend ha <laughs> ah, to know who all who are the men she was keeping contact with additionally <laughs> additionally so don't be surprised for example i am told uh, that somebody who, uh, supreme court employee just now uh, that employee was uh, in a case of some uh, sexual uh, uh, case so yeah. the family members have been tapped to understand maybe a government was on to oblige some judge by trying to find out what the plan was you are talking there is a report saying that a minister his gardener his cook and some other people were tapped it may so happen that the minister was using those phones to talk to somebody else <laughs> so that is one aspect of it 
so it can be what you think see we even do not know today why x y z whose telephone it was what was the angle but i believe in one thing which dr swami has been openly maintaining that <clears throat> have a life dr swami many times tells ramesh and ashish and me to help with if anybody is reading my mail <clears throat> although we take all <laughs> precaution he says what is there i have nothing secret what is there in the my open talk what i am talking on the show what i am talking at home and what i am talking in parliament lobby is all open so one way he has a carefree life he is not bothered but please be assured i want to tell all our panelists that what pegasus is doing is one part of the uh, tapping story the other tapping goes on in india unlimited yeah once mr arun shori leaked a conversation with mr deva gowda and ajit singh the party president and it came in the indian express on the front page trying to embarrass uh, deva gowda and ajit singh which you all know the central government was headed by rajiv gandhi and the state government was headed by one mr clean ramakrishna hegde what <laughs> 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 <So> happened <laughs> a inquiry commission was set up in the party headed by dr swami and his report came and bahadur madhu dandavate filed a question in parliament which happened to be a starred question <laughs> and rajiv gandhi disclosed that ram krishna hegde was using the uh, uh, telephone act to tap the telephone of deva gowda ultimately the present chief minister of uh, uh, present chief minister of karnataka his father became the beneficiary of the tapping done by ram krishna hegde because he had to resign and sr bombay came as chief minister that's right so all by the way, happened by the way, hegde was also tapping the telephones of his girlfriends so <laughs> very anyway you have let out the answer uh, what i wanted to protect but anyway that is what so so don't be surprised there are lot of angles whose telephone who's tapping which architect a telephone was tapped in gujarat that everybody knows that was not done by pegasus it was done by the local administration so anyway i have tried to answer your question although you it may have been directed to the others uh, i will add another anecdote afterwards but now uh, maybe others will have to comment on what you raised okay technical three you want to take the head uh, yes arvind ji agar aapki ijazat ho to main is baat ko main hindi mein uttar do ha zarur 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 हाँ तो देखिए आज की व्यवस्था अगर आप देखेंगे भारत की सरकार की है तो अगर हम सौ बाबू देखेंगे तो शायद नब्बे प्रतिशत उसमें भ्रष्ट हैं एक जमाना ऐसा था जब सिर्फ दस प्रतिशत भ्रष्ट थे तो अब क्या हो गया है ये नब्बे प्रतिशत जो है इनको हमेशा ये चिंता रहती है कि वो जो दस जो भ्रष्ट नहीं है वो क्या कर रहे हैं क्योंकि उनको ये लोग ब्लैकमेल नहीं कर सकते मेरे पास ये है तो मेरे पास ये है सी द गाय नॉट करप्ट वो हमेशा यही बोलेगा मेरे पास सच है यू नो दीवार डायलॉग तो सो ये 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 एक एक चीज देख रहा हूं आप देखिए एस के श्रीवास्तव जी एनडीटीवी के विजन ब्लोअर थे आईटी ऑफिसर उनको 56 जे में कंपल्सरली रिटायर कर दिया गया जितेंद्र कुमार ओझा उनको भी यही हुआ है और और उसके बाद अभी राजेश्वर सिंह जी बिकॉज स्वामी जी ने उनको पहले से उनका जो जो चेस गेम जो है ना वो देख लिया कि इस तरह से मुंह करने वाले हैं तो उन्होंने उसको रोक दिया है लेकिन अभी भी ये अगर मौका मिला तो कुछ ना कुछ जुगाड़ करेंगे ये लोग तो ये बात है आज की व्यवस्था ऐसा है और मेरा ये मानना है एंड मैं यहां पर बोल रहा हूँ क्योंकि ये मैं पहले भी कह चुका हूँ अंग्रेजी में मेरा ये मानना है कि अगर आप मोदी सरकार को एक क्रिकेट टीम की तरह देखें तो इस क्रिकेट टीम में सचिन तेंदुलकर खेल नहीं रहे हैं इलेवन में ताकि वो बहुत ही एक्सपीरियंस हैं बट बहुत ही फिट हैं लेकिन सचिन तेंदुलकर उसमें नहीं खेल रहे हैं ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट रोहित शर्मा को बाहर निकालने की कोशिश की जा रही है चेतेश्वर पुजारा के पूरे नए नए रूप निकाले जा रहे हैं तो फिर क्या करेगा ये इलेवन <laughs> ये मेरा मानना है अगर आप इसे आप संतुष्ट है यू कैन अग्री और डिसएग्री विथ मी बट मैं ऐसा इस तरह से देख रहा हूं 
आई होप आई आंसर योर क्वेश्चन सर ये नब्बे प्रतिशत जो है इसके हाथ में है आज भारत इसकी मुठ्ठी में है अरविंद जी दी अदर इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट इज इन जनरल इंडिया पीपल डोंट वैल्यू प्राइवेसी एट ऑल वेदर इट्स देर ओन और समबडी एल्स सो दैट्स वाई आई रोड अ ट्वीट इट्स इट्स नॉट प्राइवेसी इन इंडिया इट्स प्राई एंड सी दैट्स ऑल दे I mean, everybody yeah, in India is interested yeah, in pri. Yeah, P R Y and S W. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so pre people in India are more interested to pri and see what's happening with the other. So it's it's basic tendency. It's just that if you're curious, and if somebody offers you ten million dollars, you just want to click on the link. I mean, attitude wise, they have to change first. And plus, as you, I mean, I see clearly explained. And I mean, you can't do much because if the if the top is so corrupt. I mean, what will the people, common people, do? And as I said, common people need not worry about Pegasus. It's too expensive to target a common person. And why some people there are not there is not for you and me to take. As maybe the top, maybe three or four will be from the top two, three people in the government. The rest, there are five licenses available. One Babu might think, I don't like that Babu. Let me track him. I mean, how does it matter? You know, it's five licenses. So the the key is it's important that you know we. It is it this cannot happen without the government's tacit support let me put it that way it's impossible for pegasus to spy on anybody or to put yeah, a number let, on anybody without the support let me ask you to um, shri ayyar and uh, ramesh if uh, for instance the israeli government says that all the uh, tapping or uh, whatever uh, spyware used were on written contracts with governments of the each each country hmm which means uh, india had a contract mm mm-hmm. written contract because the requirement of the nso is that it will be given only to governments mm mm-hmm. what started off by uh, using to penetrate the uh, terrorists mm. was allowed to be used for political purposes provided the government wanted it and they mm. would not question mm. the you know government knows its national interest you know mm. who is uh, nso mm. to say that this is not exactly. a correct national interest exactly okay? exactly okay. so if this comes out do you think that uh, it will have an impact uh, in india or people say this happens all the time koi kaun si badi baat hai we should be talking about corona why are we talking about this etc this is the issue i mean do we spend energy to get to the bottom of this of course you uh, you people you know for you it's child's play to get it into the bottom of it uh, but you know there are so many people who are struggling to learn what is this all about mm. uh, uh, you know and uh, what is the technicality how it is done so on so many um, uh, you know you are spending a lot of your time updating your knowledge to so to be able to understand this but is it is is it something which uh, uh which uh, has uh, will probably i my personal view is that the problem will come from the supreme court and not from any of us correct absolutely right dr swami common the supreme court says that this has violated your two fundamental rights article 19 and article 21 Mm-hmm. it will have a very damaging effect i know that people may say no 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 what people know but but in the emergency this exact same thing happened mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the lack of freedom to meet people talk freely became a factor and it became a factor with the most illiterate part of india which is up bihar right. uh, and all all these educated madrasis like you me and ramesh uh, <laughs> <laughs> we voted for indira gandhi <laughs> you see if everybody was thinking like madrasis then in a, in a, the emergency would have never have gone mm. this is this northern uh, cow belt it is called or used to be called that is the one that not only voted against mrs gandhi but they wiped out the party from the parliament completely from you from 11 states you see so therefore the common sense the common man is not i mean 
contrary to the feeling, I would say the educated people are the ones who sort of dismiss this, you know, what is this happens all the time, mm -hmm. why are we wasting time, we should be working about COVID and so on. The common man thinks that this is dangerous and it should not happen. This is right. our ancient, ancient culture showing its way uh, because we have, we have not been brainwashed by the use of English. So, I mean, this is these are my projections because the emergency has always fascinated me uh, on why the northern, most poor, more poorest part of India, the least educated part of India, why did they vote for democracy while the most uh, educated part of India voted? Uh, for uh, for the emergency. So, Dr. So my input for you is this. Yes. Emergency put in restrictions on freedoms in terms of physical as well, uh, to a yes. large extent. Yes. But Pegasus is not like that. Okay. I, 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 I agree. But okay. then but, the, uh, but the educated people should have felt more uh, strongly about exactly. that. Exactly. That that's why I said Indians, by and large, don't give a, I mean, when don't give, really don't give a damn about privacy. They don't care. That's why when I said they want pry and see, they really don't care. But Dr. Swami, but individuals like let's say Ram succeeds in his petition will have a severe impact. And I'm completely agree with you that the, if the Supreme Court comes hard on this, it's going to be a huge embarrassment. Forget about local embarrassment. Globally, India's yes. name would be badly damaged for spying on its own people. It's going to have a bad impact. Then the cascading effect will happen. Obviously, the educated think, ah, this is normal. But as you said, the uneducated says, oh, we have, they have lost our trust, right? At the end of the day, what is the core? The core is basically the trust. So these guys are spying on me. I don't like it. That would trigger the tsunami. So Sri, your point. Yeah, sir, sir, there's one small difference between 1970s and now, sir. And that is that fake narrative has taken such a strong root in our society. Sir, I'm telling you, even lower middle class, anyone who has a TV, the moment their eyes open, the TV is on. Something or the other, the data is being consumed, sir. It's, it is continuous and, and each one uh, forms their own reliability coefficient being from zero to one. Means zero is I don't trust anything this channel says. One is this, this channel is absolute speaker of truth. So they come up with their own thing saying that, okay, this is what it is. But the point I think is we need to really, really do. I'm sorry to go a little bit different from this. We need to make sure everybody votes, sir. The, the, the middle class take the easy way out. 100% you have to vote. If you don't vote, you'll be fine. And make it possible by using blockchain and being able to vote from the comfort of your home, watching TV, but you use your smartphone and vote. Because why I say this is now it is a little harder to, uh, uh, you know, uh, have en masse like the way it happened in 1977. Um, each each state has its own quirks. Like, for example, you take Tamil Nadu. 65% is supposed to be youth, yet they went and voted for the DMK. And, and in many constituencies, sir, the margin of victory or loss is less than 1,000 votes. This is where my fear comes in. Were any uh, Rohingyas settled in these places? See, once you are in, in India, it's absolutely impossible to control. The local MLA has complete taps. So many people are coming in. This is a locked vote. And I will, if I give them the voter's card and Aadhaar card, and this is Bhaiti Ganga mein ek aur mil gaya. So this is this is a problem we have. And and I think you know there is a mindset that is and you've been stressing this for a long time. What is my identity? This answer has to be in every child's uh, mind, body, and soul. I am a human being first. Then I am an Indian. That 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 I will support what is India. Look at all the lumpen sitting in Tamil Tamil Nadu. And why isn't anybody say doing anything about it? Yesterday I had a, a five minute hangout, sir, where I said how DMK and TMC are taking such good care of their constituents. Open pass. Do whatever you want. We will not go after you. Yeah. Right. So anyway, uh, I, the point. I think I hope uh, I've made my yeah, point. Yeah. We yeah, understood your point. Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, Jagdish. No, I'm, I'll make one more observation. Yeah. Uh, I said about public impression. Dr. Swami also said about the yeah. same thing. You see, it's like Bofors. Bofors ultimately in the law of court, uh, uh, it was proved that there was none, uh, nobody was guilty and nothing happened. But public impression was that, yes, 
the bribe was taken and the corruption uh, uh, led to the uh, buying of the uh, guns and all that. Now, same thing, even in this case, I believe, in fact, this is my impression, that public feel that, yes, something has been done. But only thing is, the common man is not affected by that. Now, for example, Mamta Banerjee, Avishek Banerjee and uh, other people, they, uh, they, they claim that their names are there. In During the Bengal elections, some recording of the conversation between the uh, party president and the candidate and all that was released. Now it is proof enough that maybe Pegasus was used at that time. And therefore, this uh, uh, tapping was done. So maybe public eye is very, very clear that, yes, something is being done. No, but I don't no, let's see. I'll... First of all, uh, first of all <clears throat> when your uh, voting percentage for a winner is uh, generally 10 percentage point, even in Bengal, it's only less than 10 percentage point. Then this common man issue is not there. It's the educated people, if they are horrified that I am no more safe, you know, all my secrets are coming out and so on. In fact, one of the ministers had uh, the, the private secretary in the list in your uh, Pegasus. And people <laughs> think that's because the private secretary would know that minister's social activities and uh, probably talk about it and so on. So there, therefore, I'm saying that uh, uh, I would not dismiss uh, this uh, elite crowd and so on, because when elections are being won and lost uh, between 5 and 10 percent of the vote, uh, I would say that uh, these things do matter. And uh, you could um, uh, lose an election because of this. And so it's not a mass uh, thing uprising, but it's uh, uh, the balance has changed and, and you lose. So therefore, there's a very high stakes for the government of India. Yeah, in Dr. addition, Swami, I don't think... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Dr. Sir. Swami, you may recall after the 2G you exposed and you were yes. campaigning in the assembly elections of Tamil Nadu. Yes. An old lady stopped you in the car. Yes, that's right. You can, you can. And, 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 and Jaita appropriated it as a hers. You see. Yeah, but that old lady uh, told Dr. Swami that you should not allow the DMK to come to power. Ah. That is what she said. So, so Dr. Swami asked her in Tamil, "Why?" She says, "I don't know, but something terrible has happened. They they should not be allowed yeah. to come to power." So, if that is the awareness of the common masses who are uneducated, deep south, uh, old lady. She knew that something terrible had happened, but but she did not know what its implications were, for her at least. Yes. Yeah, one more thing, Arvindji, because see, if Mamta is targeted, a lot of their supporters, even they don't, they are not targeted, but they have an emotional connect saying, wow, so Mamta has been targeted, so I don't trust. See, the, see it's a trust factor, essentially. I think it's not that every common man need to be targeted. But if their leader or somebody they follow is targeted, it has an impact on them and how they think. But if okay. you want to see, you want to see politically, this is not actually the state versus the opposition or the state versus the dissident. It is the selected people versus those who are opposed to them. They may be from their own party. They may be from the government. They may be from the bureaucracy. And they may be also from the opposition. That is a difference in this time what has happened. Hmm. Okay. I think we should... Uh, okay, we is, uh, we'll have to come back to this after some revelations come. Okay. Okay. So, uh, with that, uh, let us conclude. Uh, I think what uh, Arvind does the conclusion. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Swami. In fact... Uh, the beginning of this discussion was made two weeks back when Gopi Kishnan was on our uh, panel. And uh, that day, the revelation was done. In fact, the first installment of information came on uh, for, uh, Sunday, 14 days back. And uh, today we are discussing because substantial information is out, courtesy various uh, media channels and others. And as Dr. Swami says, 
In fact, uh, Dr. Swami, your tweets uh, uh, this morning and yesterday <laughs> about the Israel government doing something, France yeah. government doing something. Yeah. I mean, it looks as if uh, maybe the next week will be very explosive. Uh, and, yes. and, 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 and once this explosive information comes, then people will view it government differently. And naturally, yes. the perception will change. And uh, yes. therefore, it is important. And maybe uh, uh, sometime in future, we'll discuss the, the, the more uh, details once it is available about this uh, Pegasus or the spying or surveillance. Thank you, uh, Sri Ayer, for providing a very, very useful information. Your PPT was such useful for people. And as Dr. <laughs> Swami said, many people. In fact, I am not a technical person. I learned a lot of things uh, about this uh, spyware and all that. Ramesh Swami added to that uh, technical knowledge. Thank you, both, both of you. Uh, Dr. Swami, of course, as usual, provides the political implications of the uh, 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 the uh, technical uh, uh, the actions by the different uh, agencies. Thank you, Dr. Swami, for being with us and providing a new dimension. And in fact, people look, people are looking forward to what you have actually predicted. So maybe tomorrow day after and yeah. the days to come. I'll, I'll make one more prediction. The yeah. person who signed the contract between the government of India and uh, NSO. <laughs> when his name comes out, you will see there will be a furor. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you, for example, uh, uh, went to library of parliament and found out the 333 crore odd money was spent. Yeah, you, that's right, spent. the budget. <laughs> this is all you have done. In fact, uh, uh, yeah. this is the contribution about this uh, whole uh, uh, event is uh, yes. significant and I'm sure uh, whatever you have uh, said uh, yesterday and today uh, that will also come true and the, <laughs> the, the I mean the it will, I mean government should actually issue a white paper yes uh, that's right and the opposition should demand it opposition has been demanding a parliamentary committee maybe joint parliamentary committee some such thing but this will not uh, really lead to much government should come up with the official paper by saying that whether we have bought it or not, and if we have bought it, uh, why we have bought it, how much money and all that, maybe. Yeah. So okay. for, for, okay. Uh, we look, yeah. look forward to more information and we look okay. forward to more interesting discussion. Thank you, Shri Ayaji. Thank you, Ramesh Swami. Thank you, Jagdish Shetty Ji, Dr. Swami, <laughs> and my technical team, led by Ashish Shetty, Ishwar Ayer, Gadki Rakesh, Swaminathan, Tejas, and Vishal Mehta. And I am very happy to tell you कि हम अब इस चैनल का एक शुद्ध विशुद्ध हिंदी हिंदी चैनल भी लॉन्च करने की योजना बना रहे हैं और हम लोगों ने आपस में कुछ बातचीत की है शायद हम अगस्त के महीने में एक विशेष प्रोग्राम करके महीने में फ्रीक्वेंसी उसकी उतनी नहीं होगी हर हफ्ते नहीं होगी लेकिन एक चैनल हम करेंगे डॉक्टर स्वामी इतनी अच्छी हिंदी बोलते हैं आज हमारे पैनल पे श्री अय्यर जी ने शुद्ध हिंदी में बात की तो एक बहुत विशाल समुदाय है जो हिंदी समझता है और जो हिंदी में जानना चाहता है हम उनके लिए भी एक कार्यक्रम करेंगे धन्यवाद आपको हम अगले अगले सप्ते विल बी मीटिंग अगेन नेक्स्ट संडे 8 पीएम विद अ न्यू टॉपिक एंड मे बी सम एक्सक्लूसिव डिस्कशन विद द स्पेशल गेस्ट थैंक यू वेरी मच लुक फॉरवर्ड टू सीइंग यू ऑन नेक्स्ट संडे 8 पीएम टिल देन नमस्कार जय हिंद वन एडिशन one addition, it was the Hindi belt which saved us in 1977 and therefore we owe a duty to the Hindi speaking walas uh, to do a special session for them. Sure, sure. Thank Namaskar. you. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar. Yeah.